Okay, we're back, host. Yeah, go for the ad. All right. All right. And just a quick word from our sponsors. After this ad, just do a couple more donations and throw it to the interview. All right, welcome back to Summer Games on Quick 2017, benefiting Doctors Without Borders. A uh, few donations here from Barry Kramer. $200 says, enjoying these runs while I have the runs. Keep up the great work. We have... Uh, $20 from Abby Stabby, who says, didn't realize just how long-winded my last donation comment was, so here's $20 more to make up for the announcer reading the whole thing. Don't worry, Abby. We cool. All right, and next up we have an interview uh, with Jay Hobbs, Frockenock, and Critical Sid. Take it away.
Hey man, the host. What's up? Do you want to hear your own voice in the headphones? Cool. Just let me know at any point if it's too loud. Hey, yeah, sorry guys, I had to reset it there. On the couch, if the game is too loud or too quiet, let me know by the mixing board here.
So uh, is the game audio like a good volume for you? Yeah, how about for the runner? No, I'll turn it up if you want. Yeah, leave it on Windows. All right, thanks guys for the interview. Coming up next is Freedom Planet by Flat Irvy. And then heading into the Sonic Block, my name is Buffalo Prime. I'll be your host for the next couple of games. And I do have to let you guys know, we do have a donation incentive that we are trying to reach for Sonic Generations. It is Green Hill Zone blindfolded. So Frockinock will play that if we can get 500,000 bits cheered. So make sure to cheer those bits into the chat. We do have a $117 donation from Blue Cheetah, which was $3 for every death of Super Monkey Ball. Are you guys all ready, the runners? Okay. So just wait for the host to keep We got you guys a $10 in, donation bring from Furlim. The myth, the legend, the Fled Derby. May the cool boxes stay away from the ceilings in your run, gathering all the Brazilian community around to watch and cheer for you. Go Fled! Cat boo. Okay, we're ready with the game if you want to throw it over to them. All right, everybody, join me in welcoming Fled Vervi with Freedom Planet. <laughs> okay, we live? Okay, go on. Just start the run whenever. Just do three, two, one, I guess, to them. You're the runner. <laughs> okay, I'll start it. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Yes. Let's go, people! <laughs> That's what I like to hear. Okay, so this is Freedom Planet with Lilac. I am Sasink and Punchy. This is my Lexi. Hello. And uh, this we'll be playing through with Violet. She's kind of the main character of the game. She has a boost, which is done with the meter in the top left, sort of like a Rocket Knight game or a Rice Star or something like that. And you'll see he'll be dive kicking all over the place when he goes through the levels quickly. When you jump, you lose speed because you're in the air, so you decelerate. If you dive kick, for mysterious reasons, you don't decelerate. So he's going to be doing that all the time throughout the run. And uh, this run was originally supposed to be a, a race between Revolution, who sadly couldn't be with here, here with us today because his visa got denied, which is unfortunate, you know, life and stuff. So he's hit the cycle of the geyser. That's a particular cycle. That only arrives every so often. You have to be very precise to make that cycle. But he, uh, he made a backup strat. And here is a mid-boss. You have to kill the back four orbs as fast as possible before they go underground. A perfect strat right there. Excellent mid-boss. So this, like, every stage is kind of broken into two acts. You can see, like, the transition where the music changes and what have you. On the slope, do a ground sight clone and then hold up so that you don't lose speed as fast so that you fly over the hole. And that right there is called a fade-out skip. Whenever you leave a screen, the game fades out. The fade-out is artificial, not necessary. It's done purely for cosmetic effects. So if you pause the game, press restart, and then unpause the game again at a specific timing, it skips the fade-out animation for some reason. It's like barely faster, but because Flo Derby will do anything that's barely faster, he will go for it. 
even if it risks killing his entire run, because he's that type of person. Large cyclone jump. If you cyclone on the ground and then Almost jump, there. you get a large speed boost because it's like multiplicative on the ground. And uh, this would normally be the lead into the boss of the first level. You don't fight the boss in this level because you can just sort of skip it because the trigger to end the level is on top of the level, which you're not really supposed to be able to get up to. But uh, you can. Like, like so, if you do a precise cyclone jump, aim at a spot on the scene you can't see, and then boost directly right, you're now on top of the level. Very well the done. Off the Flawless. Okay. If you miss that, it loses like 40 seconds or something, so good hustle. Because we have to actually fight the boss. Alright, so this is the second level Relic Maze. It's one of the harder levels in the game, despite being only the second one. It's full of a lot of precise movement tech and other stuff like that. So we'll boost from here, dive onto a very specific slope, do a double dive in the air where you can dive kick twice by cyclone cancelling. There's a lot of different moves to do in this game that they all combo into each other in very natural ways. It's quite a lot of fun to run. And there's another fade-out skip there. You can do that one instantly on touching the door for whatever reason. Every single door and every fade-out has a particular timing to it that's unique to that door. And the only way is you've just got to memorize all of them. It's good fun. So he's waiting for the cycle there to boost into the hole precisely. That's a lot harder than it looks. Because if you miss it, you bounce clean out. And therefore lose a lot of time and your meter. Oh, okay. You got it, just climb the ladder. Okay. We'll and this will be ladder. a zip. Platform moves into you, you move into platform, you go up. And he walks clean through that wall because he hit the switch earlier that disabled the yellow blocks. But the yellow blocks and the purple blocks use the same programming. So if you hit the yellow blocks and then zip into the purple room, you can just walk clean through the purple wall. It doesn't look like you can, but yes, you can. And he did a checkpoint warp there where sometimes restarting to go back to more convenient checkpoints is, uh, is faster. In that, this level's non-linear, so it works better in this level than it does in most. We have another mini boss. Oh yeah, and this mini boss can be skipped skip outright. If you just boost under it, you skip it and just hit the uh, the train and it dies, and that's a mid boss entirely skipped without really any effort whatsoever. You even get an achievement for doing that. So like that skip is known by the developer. The developer of this game is actually a really cool dude. He's like sort of left speedrunning tricks in at the behest of uh, of the community because he thinks they're kind of cool himself. That is called Cave Glide, and that entire sequence of movement is ridiculously precise, and Fladerby makes it look way easier than it actually is. Got a fade out skip. All right, check this out. He gets onto the ceiling and like changes off the ceiling in order to gain more speed, because if you dive kick off the ceiling on a curved surface, you gain lots of speed very quickly. This is the fastest way to do this. It looks like it would be slower to push the block, but no, it's not. And here he'll do another like ceiling transfer thing, like we're playing Tony Hawk. To gain lots of speed. And here's another vaguely non-linear section where you have like two rooms. And we'll do the auto-scroller first, where you can sit down while you wait. How pleasant. It doesn't last for very long though, and then you have to get a move on. He's also intentionally leaving crystals around while he goes through this section. The crystals refill meter, the top left, which lets you boost which means you have to intentionally leave crystals lying around as you proceed through this room in order to have enough to boost right now. So you can exit the room in a faster fashion. Very precisely planned out. And that could do this boost earlier. And this is a chicken. One, two, three, he boost, boost gone. dead. That was a mid boss. You see, you see him? No, you don't. Don't even worry about it. So we're coming up on the boss of the stage here, and this boss is a complete pain. Uh, he, he has very unpredictable movement and can really screw you out of a lot of time if you don't get it precisely right. So he's going to attempt a trick called Timer Freeze here. Freedom Planet runs off the game clock, and as you can see, the game clock isn't visible, which means it's frozen. So if you boost precisely through here and get a hit in before the timer comes back on screen exactly like that, the timer stays frozen and the camera stays locked. And for Derby here is going to do damage boost to try and get as much hits on, uh, on Mantleth here as possible. And here he'll go for the quick hit on the third phase, which entails doing enough damage to this arm. Now, unfortunate. If you get it precisely right, Mantleth will jump into you as you're boosting into the wall. And when you boost into the wall, you like flip upside down and then stay floating against the wall. So you can like damage things by sort of sitting on top of them. And you've seen um, doing a little bit of a damage boost at the start of each phase there as well, just getting a bit of extra damage in. 
Good fight. Okay. He had one hit remaining. <laughs> he still goes for those damage boosts, even though he's like nearly dead. Nothing stops this man. Nothing. B27 is a good time. Okay, so Fortune Knight. Fortune Knight has the first and I think only instance of wrong warping in this game. And it only works because the, like, the screen transitions in this, in this particular level are actually programmed straight up differently from everything else. And this middle screen route here is completely bonkers and I don't even really understand anything that just happened there. <laughs> he like cycloned off a loop, hit the loop at the precise point to attach onto it, cycloned off it, and then double dive. So I, uh, you need to like slow it down to really understand. And that, that laser didn't break that one block that Flodervi tried to jump through. That, as far as I know, is random. I don't get it. It makes not sense. It's basically a war cycle, actually. Oh, I didn't know that. Go figure. Global cycle, apparently. I had to go super as well here because of this. And here's the wrong warp coming up. You hit this cap, which closes it so the enemy kills itself with its own bullet. And then you roll into it to bonk off and out of the loading screen. And then it defines a checkpoint as the last checkpoint on the previous screen that warps you to the next screen over so that you appear halfway through the new screen. This only works on this level and on these two screens because they are actually literally programmed differently on an engine level. You high uppercut onto that ceiling to reverse roll boost out of that loading zone to do another wrong warp. And a high uppercut is a trick where you have to hold up and press jump and attack at the like, exact same time. It's like within a couple of frames of each other. So your uppercut goes like twice as high. You get varying heights based on how well you do it and also whether the game feels nice and whether or not it's a Wednesday because it's hilariously inconsistent even at the best of times. And that was a mid-boss, by the way. Didn't really have time to explain that. Just kind of boost against Just the wall a bunch. Oh yeah, and pausing, for whatever reason, will speed up slowdown effects like that. That normally takes several full seconds to play out, but if you just mash pause, it goes by way faster. I don't know why. It applies to every explosion in the game, even the really long boss ending ones. But they're frame perfect on the boss ending ones. He'll go for them, because I know he will. No point, but he'll do it. So off zip lines here, you can get tremendous speed if you cyclone off of them at the precise timing with just the right type of angle. And uh, it's really finicky and quite hard to do. Good ground cyclone off that. So here's another zip line. This one loses a lot of time if you miss it. That's a good angle. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, that's good. So do a double dive here just to miss that ramp, because if you touch the ramp, you like bounce off it. And the speed of the elevator is dictated by the speed you have going into it, so it went down like comically quickly. Oh, I didn't get the perfect angle. There's a balloon here that you normally have to write. He'll go for a backup balloon skip instead. Oh. No side plan. Unfortunately, you can skip that. Early. You can skip that if you uh. That, that was supposed it. to be in the boss as well. That was a mid boss. Not even worth commenting on. Next. How about an actual boss? Okay, so this is Robo Panther, and uh, its cycle of attacks is dictated by uh, whether or not you deal enough damage to it straight away and also partially by whether or not it feels like doing attacks particularly quickly. I think it is literally random. I'm not 100% certain. Hmm. He's doing a boost hit. Okay, so here's a, a trait of boosts on levels where the floor moves automatically away from you. It's a thing known as wonky boosting, where you sort of gain very analog control over the speed and direction of your boost. So you can actually slow your boost down by pulling away from it. And he's gone up early, that's unfortunate. But now he's doing high cyclones in order to do a backup strat here and boost all the way into that, a perfect boost through that. Great backup. And a high cyclone is done when you pause the game, jump, pause the game, and then pause the game, unpause the game and try and jump again. Like, I'm told it's frame perfect. I don't believe that. I won't argue about it here. And if you, if you do it correctly, you cyclone ridiculously high, like up to three times the height of a normal jump. And also maintain your speed for quite a distance. It's quite good to go quickly with, but it's remarkably difficult to pull off consistently. Even in IL runs, you'll miss it like a bunch of times trying to do it. So this is Sky Battalion, a non-linear level where you can do any of three sections in any order. And we're going to completely ignore that by doing them in linear order anyway. And thus completely undermining the design gimmick of the level. Screw me. He tried to do a spike jump there. If you land on a spike and try and jump off it at precisely the frame at which you land, you, uh, you can jump off it without taking damage. Which, uh, you can go for that. It's frame perfect in a 60 FPS game, if you want. Gain speed off the red springs. The red springs give you more speed than the blue springs. 
so you dive kick onto that. It's pretty hard to hit the right spring there and not hit the left one and get sent backwards. Uh, in this mid-boss, you have to hit a high uppercut here, exactly like that, and then boost to the right. And you bounce off, and he dies in one hit. Mid-boss didn't even get a chance to attack. That's how fast you can do it. And he'll roll boost through this cannon. Normally, you have to destroy the cannons and wait for an airplane to come and pick you up, and then go to the next level. Or you can just not do that and touch the right side of the screen and move on with your life. We like to do that here. So here, he'll do a damage boost. If you turn up exactly like that, if you turn around just before you get hit, you bounce in the other direction, because whether or not you bounce in a certain direction is based on the direction you're facing, not what direction you actually got hit from. The engine's not that complicated. <laughs> so if you, if you turn around just slightly before you get hit, you're bouncing the opposite direction and maintain a little bit of speed. It's how you save a few more frames and make that like, entire sequence of movement possible at all. Oh yeah, and health pedals as well, that's health. If you have full health, health pedals will also refill your meter, so health management becomes key. And this is another mid-boss, this is Spade. His movements are manipulable by your own, which means you kind of get a feel for it. It's really hard to explain, considering it lasts about negative two seconds like that. It's done. And if you pause the game, his color palette inverts. <laughs> <laughs> so the final ship here can be a bit of a pain because it has moving crystals that can block your path, and it's based on the global cycle, which uh, the global cycle is like the cycle of how long you've been in the level so far. So. It's nearly impossible to predict where they're going to be. That looks, that was almost good. Almost. It's fairly decent. Just about. Taking ladders is slow, boosting up them is faster. Skids through the platform there at a very precise angle. That's a lot harder to do than it looks. Everything in this game is a lot harder to do than it possibly looks, but it's the kind of game where you, uh, you spend hours practicing single movement tricks. Get stuck on the ceiling. That, that's a thing with this game speed. You can kind of just attach to ceilings all willy-nilly, if you like. And here's this mid-boss. He's going to bonk off the wall to try and get a final hit in. Kind of whiffed one of the hits, so we'll have to do a, a slightly slower thing. If you get hit on the way down, you regain your cyclone, and you can use that to exit quicker. And now we'll hit the boss. And he, he'll jump dive onto that rocket, because it will start the boss 0.2 seconds faster. Here's a boss. You have to hit all its feathers and then hit the head. Or just that, which gets everything in one attack. So he'll bait the boss over to the right side of the screen here and then do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Dead. You have to wait for Easy. these four dashes to attack again. In this third phase, there's the visibility attack. You can skip. You can skip. He boosts through and then does an uppercut through a combo to hit all the orbs again. The timing on all this is quite specific, but he makes it look easy. And the last two phases, second verse, same as the first. Just one boost, all it takes. He went for the frame perfect pause to try and skip the, uh, the slow explosion animation. Which, since we go by game time, has no bearing whatsoever on how your run ranks, but you can do it. This is far from over. <laughs> Jade Creek, this level rules. This has super swimming in it because we stole our trick names from Wind Waker. So you can boost under the water, and if you repeatedly jump and dive, the jumping rule where you don't lose speed if you're dive kicking applies underwater as well. So you can do this and rise out with a lot of speed. Otherwise, swimming is quite slow, but if you do that, you can move through large bodies of water really fast, which makes a water level in a platform game actually not complete. Complete slow. That's not a complete sentence. I don't care. Moving on. So he'll do it again here. He'll rise out of the water with speed. And keeping, chaining continuous dive kicks is harder underwater because obviously if you're in the water, you're not in the air. So it won't like, you're not in the air, so it'll make you do repeated dive kicks. You have to do it with a certain rhythm. And those bubbles will like extend your jump a little bit further if you manage to hit one on the precise cycle, which of course he does. No problem whatsoever. So that jump is normally not possible to make unless you hit a very specific bump in the ground. And then he like cyclones off, hits the ceiling, and goes all the way up to the top of the level, not even remotely doing the intended route. Should make sure I'm running against a cycle later on this stage. 
Yeah, this whole level is kind of cycle-based, because there's a, a later bit of the level where water rises and sinks based on the global cycle. So you have to execute well enough within certain parameters to have the adequate cycle. So this is late glide. He's not going to make it all the way, unfortunately. If your jump is very, I very precise, figures. you can make the whole jump in one. And this is Nera. Normally, she summons shields in order to protect herself the same way you can get shields as the player character. Or you can just kill her so she doesn't have time to do that. It's faster that way. He made that cycle. Barely. <laughs> so this screen and the entire next one is all on uh, a it. huge global cycle. Which I think so, yeah. so this is the largest super swim. Let's see if he gets it. Because if you do, you come up with an immense amount of speed. Nailed it. Yes. That's really hard. Will he get the jump off the box? Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love it. I love that sequence. It's great. And that saves like over 10 seconds compared to doing this. It saves a ton of time. So much time. And so good looking as well. That's why I love this game as a speedrun. The movement is so good. It's so clean. All right, so we're coming up on the boss here. And the boss here is a, a thing of beauty. It's the same mid-boss from Fortune Night, which I didn't really have time to explain. So now I get to do it again. Game making up for uh, the, the, uh, the slow pace of my own commentary. I'm going to stun lock him again. Just keep him trapped against the wall, boost into him, juggle him in the air a lot so he doesn't have time to do his long, gun, shooty attack thing. Then a shopper happens, so he does high uppercuts, bounces against the wall, repeatedly kicks, and then boosts to the right to bounce off the wall again in order to repeat the process more and more and more. And in this way, you get a lot of damage off. Is he going to try murder boost? Not quite. Four uppercuts isn't bad. Oh, no frame. Almost there. Three flat. Is that three flat? That's three flat. That's really good. My ILPV on the stage is a 312. Just, you know, casually beat ILPVs by self <laughs> As you do. So the next level thermal base is a bit like Jade Creek in that straight away he's up against a particularly tight cycle in order to make a zip that allows him to skip like half the screen outright. And you really can't afford any mistakes here at all, really, if you want to make this cycle. So we'll see how this pans out. Boost up, but not too early, or you bonk on the ceiling. Dive kick under this, but not too high, so that you don't accidentally land on the platform. Jump dive here, but not too early, so that you don't miss the platform. Jump here to hit the cycle. Nice. Absolutely yes. beautiful. That's so difficult, and you can't afford even a half second worth of mistake if you want to make that at all. Won't work. Amazing. Oh yeah, and this level's gimmick is that you have key cards that you, uh, you use to get through doors and stuff. We skipped a key card by doing that zip entirely on the, the previous screen, because that takes too long. Here's a box zip. This is very easy, provided you don't do that. Actually, it still works. Never mind. Just push a box into another box and then stand on the box and the boxes go, what are you doing here? Get off me. And push you through the ceiling. All right, so this sequence is really cool. You keep speed, jump into the mid-boss here, the squid holding the key you want, repeatedly kick, boost onto the ceiling, and if you manage to do enough damage here, which is partially random, you get on the ceiling, go all the way around, and then pick up the card on the way out. It's incredibly good looking. It's my favorite strat in this game by far. Will Oops. he make the cycle? No, he, he decided Single not to go cycle for it. So this mid-boss has a bizarrely large amount of health, but because your boost can like track enemies across the screen like so, if you time it exactly right, one shot, easy, free. Uppercut, dive kick, dead. No problem whatsoever. Didn't even really get a chance to attack. Here's a giant wall of lava, because platformers aren't complete without something of this nature. But did you ever have the chance to see it? Damage boost through that. Or falling down there would cost a lot of time. So who will get the fire shield here? I think, yes. Fire shields, just like Sonic 3 and Knuckles, have elemental affinities. Like the fire shield will make you flat out immune to fire type things. Which will be useful on this screen. And on this screen, it's very important that he pays attention to and makes cycles. Because there are crushers that pound down later in the screen. And if you get hit by them, you die instantly. And he's going to go for the clip because he's crazy. Unbelievable. That's like sub-pixel based. 
and very difficult to do consistently. How are the cycles? I slightly hot. These kill you instantly if you touch them. So if your cycle is not extremely correct, you die. You lose. Go home. None for you. And there's more of them coming up. But his cycle is fine, I think. I have to wait uh, here. Yeah. yeah. Wait a little bit, but it's fine. Better than dying. So this would normally be an auto scroller where you just kind of have to sit on an elevator. No, we don't fancy that. We're going to repeatedly brain damage ourselves on the wall in order to go up as high as possible and land straight up there. Don't do fade out, Skip. Thank you. <laughs> so the key to going fast in your speedrun, right, is to attack the bosses before they're done talking. Oh, oh that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. You can attack that boss before they're even done talking. You can kill their entire first phase before the timers even come back on screen. And I believe Fladerby's trying to activate like a ladder glitch thing here in order to like make his position suddenly change. Yeah, like that. Your eyes don't deceive you. If you blinked and you missed it, he just suddenly went from up there to down there in an instant because he like stored ladder position or so. I have no idea how this works. I really don't. There you go. There's nothing else to do during this fight, because otherwise it's pretty static and it just sort of hangs around and fires balls at stuff. Oh, okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> this is my favorite level because it has the best music. This is the level that like got me into the game because a friend of mine linked me the soundtrack to this game. And I was like, what is this song? This is amazing. And that was how I ended up playing this game for like 900 hours of my life. Regretful. <laughs> so this level has super boost rings, which lets you do boosts, but more. And the boost rings, uh, the super boost puts you up to a higher speed. And the higher speed is relevant because Dragon boosts, which is what they're called, uh, do damage according to your speed. They're multiplied by your speed. And because the Super Dragon boost puts you up to maximum speed, the speed cap of the game at 15 pixels per frame, it will basically instantly annihilate everything it touches straight away, no questions asked. And this is, you have to boost at a precise position in the air to land exactly on that, to jump dive over that gap. If you fall down, you get treated to a face full of bees, and it's very unpleasant. Here are bees. And he bonked off the ceiling. That's the type of thing you don't want to do, because then bees happen. You don't want bees. I've never seen that round before. So he actually managed to pull off a high cycle in there finally, so he got like a lot of height and kept his speed there, which is how he was able to mow through that entire section so fast I pulled a face, because I've never seen that route before. So this is also a cycle thing. Those blocks appear on a very tight cycle, so he like barely makes it. Got this cyclone over the gap. Not quite. He'll try another high cycle here, I reckon. And he gets it all the way up and maintains his speed. That's really hard to do. Very difficult. So this is more cycles. Clean through, clean through. So he's on a good cycle right now. There's a block maze that appears at the end, but you can just ignore the maze entirely if your cycle is exactly so. Is it exactly so? It's exactly so. <laughs> that block appeared just a fraction of a second before he needed to boost into it to hit it. It's all very planned. You can't be more than like fractions of a second out, otherwise that will like whiff and send you tumbling backwards. So. Hollow Dragon. Hollow Dragon. So first he has to make it up to the lever, which I think he has a setup for now, or something resembling it. There you go, it doesn't bonk on the ceiling. I bonk on the ceiling all the time trying to get that and fall all the way back down. So Hollow Dragon is a boss where there's many, many balls on the back and you have to kill like most of them in order to kill the boss. Or don't do that because the game has some sort of code in it where if the boss is like mostly shuffled off the screen it will despawn orbs and you can kill it very quickly which is great because otherwise this boss would take like nine years to do so he'll wait here get a super boost ring to do more damage later and just sort of chill out here on the right side of the screen hit orbs and he's not just chilling on the right side of the screen for no reason he's trying to despawn orbs with this i think he's the successful precisely so
think now it's the perfect time for donations. Yeah, the bit coming up is in like a auto scroller shmup section kind of thing. So now is the time for donations. Perfect. We got a twenty-five dollar donation from Lee Tregan saying, "Shout out to Vlad. You're doing great. Also, great couch. How's it going, fellas?" We got a ten dollar donation from RLLB Cheese saying, ten dollars <laughs> for the amazing commentator." Wow, thanks. <laughs> we got $25 from OPT Lawyer saying, my friend and I are watching this Freedom Planet run together. It's his favorite game, and he's never seen a speed run of it. He's in utter shock right now. Awesome job. Good taste. Great taste. So he's kind of mashing buttons here, because if you mash buttons, the meter doesn't deplete fast enough. And also, he's holding right, because that makes the distance meter deplete a little bit faster. It's still an auto scroller, no matter what, really, but it's also not tracked by game time at all. But it more or less moves at a fixed speed regardless, so eh, whatever. I also try, to, I'm also hoping to get as few hits as possible. This is a boss, maybe. Can I just casually dodge? Here's a thing of note with the smup section right before he ends it. Your hitbox is the tiny lilac riding on the back of the dragon, and the bobbing up and down is not a visual effect. That does move your hitbox up and down. It's really annoying. And this is Battle Glacier. This is the hardest level in the entire game by like a long shot. Maybe, like second, yes, I'm going with hardest. I'm not going to contradict myself. It's really long, has a lot of precise tricks, and everything, you can see the ground is slightly curvy. That's not a visual effect either. That means your angle will definitely change by microscopic amounts, and that has huge implications for everything you try and do. And it's a complete nightmare to try and manage it. Oh, that's a problem. Yeah, he lost the shield early, unfortunately, which uh, necessitates doing like backup strats and possibly a different kind of like change of route because you rely on the effect of the Earth Shield at the start, which draws crystals to you, which is useful for getting boost. And this screen is based on a cycle, which because he had to wait at the start for boost, I think uh, might have difficulty making somewhat. Or this. It's fine. They come down every so often anyway. That's a cycle. What cycle? I don't know. So speed down those corpses as well is dictated by speed going in. Do the backup. Do it. Jump off that tiny corner. Ah. Just going to high uppercut his way up there instead. Get a bit of speed off that by jumping off like a weird glitchy corner thing that just happens to be protruding out of that. And these drills. Oh, these drills. They're, they are one of the level gimmicks in this. I don't like them. I resent their existence. They're very finicky, have weird hitboxes, take just slightly too many hits to be convenient, and kind of freak out sometimes and don't all go in a row. So here you have three of them in sequence. He's trying to boost through all of them to get a triple boost through it. Exactly like that. That's, again, that's harder than it looks. You have to line it up precisely so if any of them go slightly off center, they'll like black for no reason on the wall. And this is the mid-boss that chumps absolutely everyone on the first time through this game because he hits like five million times harder than anything else up to this point. But his movements are manipulable. If you just kind of sit in front of his face, but exactly so to not get hit, you can just keep him jumping in one place so that he doesn't ever move and he doesn't ever hit you. And he does a high uppercut there to sneak in a cheeky little extra hit. And one more hit, I think. Or is it two? It's two. I can't count. And you try and kill him on the right side of the screen so that he leaves the screen faster and opens the door. And this sequence here is based on platforms that move. But if you just do this, you can go totally through it under that enemy with exactly the right timing. And he's going to go for a pixel perfect sit here, literally pixel perfect with exactly the, the right spacing. Didn't quite get it the fast way, and he's going to do the setup here in order to position on precisely the right pixel. It's pixel 9064, X coordinate. I know this because I'm an idiot. <laughs> He gets it. If, if you do that zip wrong, by the way, if you're one pixel too far to the right, you soft lock. So, uh, good. Didn't soft lock. Ignores all of this entirely, just sort of walks on spikes there for a bit because you have like grief and vulnerability coming off the shield hit. Lasts a bit longer than regular hit. Otherwise, the movement here is jumping off corners in order to try and gain a little bit of speed, because you can kind of do the sonic thing of jumping off tiny corners in order to accumulate a bit more speed. Or you can jump onto corners like that, because loops in this game behave incredibly strangely. Sonic World's Engine, what are you going to do? This mid-boss returns from the first level. 
And now he doesn't. He's gone. Bye. So this is Final Joe. So he has to do a precise jump dive over that. It's very hard to not bonk the wall. Hit three of these in sequence and go straight through. That is immensely difficult because there's a bunch of enemies dogging you while you do that if you're even slightly slow. And you will die there, most likely, on your first time through the game because it's really hard. He makes it look a lot easier than it is. And this is Dale 2, a boss who is a complete pain for Lilac because you have to do precise high uppercuts to gain a number of hits in order to get rid of his shield. He got the glitch hit. For some reason, during that white fade out, his hitbox is like down below and not up where he is. So if you time it exactly right, you can get a glitch hit if you miss one of the other hits. Still got that hit. The high uppercuts have to be done exactly. If you miss a high uppercut here, you're down like six seconds or something per cycle you miss. And it doesn't look like he's going to miss any of them. Ah, no, there's one. Tries to damage boost off it, though, to save it. Very well done. I've never seen that. That's creative. Excellent. <laughs> damage boost off the projectile coming off to try and gain a little bit more height and reset his cyclone in the air. That's genius. I've never seen that before. Oh, yeah, the fake out. This game has a plot. I don't remember what it is. Now the stage is complete. You may clap again. <laughs> I'm having too much fun with this, I'm sorry. Am I going to the last four stages? Into the Dreadnought? The final four levels are short levels that are all kind of like a set, all taking place on like the final giant ship of the game. Round one. So this level is all cycle, cycle, cycles. You have to move very precisely, and this level is probably one of like the most optimized ILs in the entire game because people just sort of played this level and only this level for a period of several months at one point. I don't know why. Beats me. He's doing this round. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> if he did that like slightly slower, he would have gotten hit by that and it would have thrown all the timing off. I winced really hard at that because that was so close. <laughs> Straight in the hole. The cycle should be good for this. That route is crazy. So enemies come in all through this. It's not worth fighting any of them. Don't waste your time. You're gonna do the high uppercut for that. Oh. I might get this. hit now. Yeah, the cycle might be off because of that. No, it looks good, it looks good. Jump, like, sort of skids over every single hole because it's got just enough speed to make it up there. Very well done. And now there are airlocks which push you down. We're going to ignore those entirely by doing that and high cycle running up a ladder. If you fall down here, you die. One of, like, the two instances where you can just fall off the stage and die. In the entire game. Boosts in the air shaft before hitting the hangbar to not lose any speed whatsoever. Again, the timing on that, very difficult, and the air will actually attempt to push you down onto the hangbar and mess you up. He tried to kick an enemy there while moving through the teleporter in order to maintain his speed, because having hit lag while going through a teleporter that goes through a wall, exactly those conditions will maintain your speed, and only those conditions because this game is like that. So here he'll abuse a wonky boost again to boost straight up and then straight down off the ceiling and kill the first face straight away. And he'll damage boost bounce into the core to stay inside it with a single boost. Very fast boss, 145. So this run so far has been incredible. Uh, doesn't matter, because the Dreadbox is coming up. <laughs> oh. Dreadbox is a, like, double sub-pixel mega frame perfect uber total annoying trick where you have to be extremely precise, and if you don't get it, you lose, like, minutes. Whether or not you get it is kind of partially luck-based and partially just it's extremely precise. If you get it, you skip, like, 40 seconds of the level, and this level's kind of a ball egg, so that's pretty nice. Box, oh. this, that's the most common outcome of that. The box just gets stuck in the ceiling and doesn't take you with it, which is awesome. And if you get it, you just go through the entire ceiling. And the reason this works is because you take the key cards with you from an earlier part of the level into a later part of the level, so you can skip a door that you're not really meant to have the cards for yet. Almost. So you have to jump and like cyclone kick into this box at a precise angle in order for this to work. All the while that enemy constantly respawns underneath you to make life just that much more difficult for absolutely no good reason. Like, go away. No one likes you. We there you are. Yes! Yeah, my boy! <laughs> High cyclones up straight onto the spring. 
Not quite what he had in mind, I don't think. Still, he got Dreadbox. That can sometimes take several minutes to get. That's how inconsistent it is. The fact that he got it in a marathon run at all is crazy. That was still worth doing, I think. Just barely worth doing over the normal route. So it was worth it. You did it. You did a worthwhile Dreadbox in a marathon. A, a first for this game ever. Congrats. Oh yeah, in this section the oxygen is turned off, which basically means you like you have the breath meter like you do if you're underwater, but it depletes slightly faster for Lilac, because Lilac can breathe twice as long underwater. Fun fact. Barely noticeable in normal gameplay, but it's totally there. Or you can have the bubble shield, which also shields you from drowning underwater, which I don't remember if it does in Sonic 3 and Knuckles or not. I'm not well versed in that game. Is it? Uh, yeah, it does. Okay. Another high cycle to get over that, just a few frames faster. Another one. He's getting those a lot now. So because he has the shield, he doesn't have to do the restart here. Because if you do a restart warp here, you regain all your options back. And he does that zip, which again has to be set up remarkably precisely. And he just jumps into it. Like, he doesn't even set it up. There's a strap for that where you kind of bump your head into it to set it up. Screw that. Just jump into it. It's easy. He makes it look easy. It's not. I'm just going to take hits. It's faster that way. We start to skip a cutscene there, because cutscenes are boring. And this is Giga Serpentine. He has a lot of health. And the scary part about this fight is that you can fall off it and die. And you have to do it near the edge of it so you can bounce off and continually boost into his head. But it's all about manipulating his position so that he stays on the left. You have to make him point right there so that he just misses you. You safe spot that attack and keep him on the left side here like so. That's a bit low. Should still be fine. Okay. Comfortable. If you die after you've killed the boss, it resets you back to like the beginning of the second half of the level because the checkpoints don't know what the hell to do if you clear a level and then die. FB3, this is one of my favorite levels because it's just straight running. It's good fun. There's one section of the level that's basically just a long straight hallway and if done correctly, you maintain maximum speed all throughout here and it just feels so good. Ooh. Saving a few frames there with some riskier strats that can go horribly awry, but he just nails first try, because it's whatever. Those flames are on a cycle that he just avoids entirely because his timing is good. Barely gets around that corner there. Air drifting. Try to do a high cycle in there. Sometimes it just doesn't work and you get like a long jump instead because you just released it too soon. Try to do that. That loop breaks if you try and run halfway through it. Please fix, thank you. Or don't. So this is the long hallway. There's a bulldozer that gets in your way. You can just double dive straight over it if your timing is super good like that. Just keep the speed, boost through it. There's tons of enemies here. Doesn't matter. Just go straight through all of it. What are you afraid of that? Doesn't quite make that boost. Too far left. But that's okay, you can catch up speed here on those uh, use the pad things. But I need to shoot for the boss. Oh yeah, you need to keep the fire shield for the boss so you can do a uh, face skip switch uh, he's lost, so I guess I don't really know what you do at that point. Do it slow, right? Here are more high cyclones. Attempt for the high them. cyclone, fail it, do back up high uppercuts instead. So you can get this one at least. Well, it gets that one. Damage boost through the flame, so I wouldn't have the presence of mind to do that. And this is one of the cutscenes, unfortunately, you kind of have to watch regardless of whether or not you're playing in the mode that gets rid of cutscenes or not. Behold the drama of Freedom Planet. That's a different character that you can play as currently being stabbed in the neck. She's way faster than Lilac, but for different reasons. Lilac is cooler. I think the developer's played Cave Story once in his life. Just a hunch. So this boss is relatively simple for such a late game boss, but he's going to try and do as much damage as possible in the air in order to do uh, phase skips because ordinarily it goes up after every hit and then comes back down and you can hit it again. Or you can not do that and just hit it multiple times while it's in the air. That was still a really good fight considering he lost the fire shield early on. Very well done. He also took an extra phase off the boss <laughs> while it was already dead because its hitbox is still active and it will still drop health after the fact. 
Thank you for that. Angry dragon noises. So this is the last level, and just like many other levels before it, this one, it's on a cycle straight away in order to make a zip, in order to skip this entire vertical section. He'll do this crazy strat, which involves ceiling transferring off that. I don't do any of this because I think it's ridiculous. And he makes the cycle anyway, so what do I know about anything? And this is what happens when you put a vertical level in a game where you zip vertically. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even pause buffer it. What a guy. That has about a six pixel window if you want to do the moving strat, or I think like one if you just stand there. And he didn't even pause buffer it, which is crazy. So this level has a Too giant laser beam, yeah. which uh, you can walk into to boost yourself up it if you hit it exactly the right time. But otherwise, this level is about going as fast as possible within the constraints of the cycle. But if you get stuck in it like that, you can just boost in it and you kind of pseudo parry the laser or something of that nature. I really don't know what's going on with that. But it works, and it's fast. So do it. He'll have to wait here for this cycle. There was an, you really can't afford any mistakes on this particular portion of level if you want to make the perfect number of cycles. It's unforgiving. But it's fine, you only lose like, I don't remember how many seconds per cycle. Like, six and a half, I think. The laser was seven seconds. Okay, that. Go with what he says. He knows more about this stuff than I do. We're going now into the less fights of the ground. The last set of three fights in the game. The first fight is like a remixed version of the Battle Glacier mid-boss, the one where you can manipulate its position. You can get it in one cycle before it goes off the screen if you manage every hit as soon as you possibly do it and leave no gaps in between, like so. To jump off the loop, kick, boost, cool. one cycle. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And the second phase is unique, but his pattern, as of the recent patch, is fixed into a, a pattern that's quite good for Lilac. But you still have to do high uppercuts and damage boosts to stay up as high as possible to try and hit him in the head without letting him get away too much. So he'll now do the charge attack, uppercut, full boost to the left, and kill him. Make sure he dies before you restart. If you restart as soon as he dies, you skip to the final phase. And the final phase has a pretty low amount of health, but he's quite fast. But you can completely avoid that knife if you, like, crouch cyclone through it. Jump off the wall, dragon boost up the wall, doesn't quite get the quick Twice kill, close. but that gets off a rebound. And that's nice. the final boss. Time is when the crystal count ticks down at the end and it makes the bling noise, which we use as RTA timing end for some reason. I don't know who came up with that rule. I need to argue with them about it. Time. Time. What's in game time, my dude? Forty-four nineteen. I have no context for RTA. <laughs> level times, level times, level times. Thirty-four thirty. Wow, dude. <laughs> That's really good for a marathon run. That's the yeah. best marathon performance this game has ever had by a long shot. Like a long shot. Uh, yeah. For Derby's PB, I believe is 33.22? It's 33.22. 22.45, so that's like a minute off world record or something, which for a game this granular and intense is really good for a math, and he's frighteningly consistent. Really good job, man. Thank you. One more time, folks. Thank you so much, Fled Derby, for that Freedom Planet run. All right, guys, we have a $1,000 donation <laughs> from Kirby Master.